National audit has revealed that almost a fifth of NHS trusts has been rated red when it comes to infant mortality rates, which is, of course, a bad thing. A total of 23 trusts received the red rating from mothers and babies, reducing risks through audit and confidential inquiries, or EMBRACE, as it's known. This means that the death rate for 2020 was more than 5% above the average for other countries. Embrace looked into stillbirths and deaths within four weeks of birth. In other research, it also found that the number of women who died up to six weeks after having a baby was up by a quarter over five years. We'll get stuck into the specifics of this, but... And the reason I certainly wanted to cover it was because this seems to be happening all too often. You keep hearing it, left, right and centre, don't you, when it comes to NHS trust, whether it's maternity failings. Well, joining me now is Larissa Cordo, who is a woman's health and fertility doctor. Larissa, thank you very much. For a first world country, a massively developed nation, a great country, it seems to be quite a high risk nation if it comes to giving birth. Yeah, it appears to be one of the unsafest places, certainly in Europe, to give birth at the moment, where women are three times likelier to die in childbirth and postnatally compared to some Scandinavian countries. Right, why is this? Why is it? So there's no simple answer to this. It's a multifaceted problem that we've kind of been hearing about, as you say, all too often. There have been a series of scandals that have been exposed over the course of of this past year. And there are probably many more to come, sadly, as well. So some of the main issues which are going on here are that there's been this chronic underinvestment in Mm. maternal services all over the nation. And that underfunding and underinvestment is now coming to light because COVID and the pandemic was really a bit of a final straw in this. And it put so much pressure on the services and the staff that now we're seeing the results of all of that. So at the same time that we're facing 10,000 more births across Mm. the past year between 2020 and 21, we're also seeing chronic midwife shortages, the likes of which we've never seen before in our lifetimes. Mm. So at the moment, the NHS is missing about 2,000 midwives and 600 have walked out in the past year. Now, these are people who have served on the front line of this crisis, who've had no rest, no let up in all of this. They are underfunded, underappreciated. They are pushed to the absolute limit. There are many who absolutely cannot cope under the current pressures at all and are being left with very little choice then to leave and nothing is being done. Yeah, now I've floated this a few times when it comes to, especially with staffing shortages in the Mm. NHS. Midwifery, I think, is one of those ones where I, all right, okay, economists might be about to shout their TV screens at me now and don't get me wrong, everyone who watches this show will know that I I regularly do criticise maybe some of the way that the money is spent in the NHS. That's a conversation for another the time. But if you're trained to be a midwife, I think we need to try to fast track that as much as we can within the safety parameters, of course, and maybe do things like wipe student debt for these people. This is, mm. by definition, an incredibly practical element of our NHS. You know, giving birth is, is again, by definition, as old as the dawn right. of time. And we need to make sure that that is an area of our medical services that we are pretty secure. At. I cannot have it where we are in Britain, such a developed country, where it is at such a high risk. We need to entice midwives. Yeah. We have to do that. Well, why are they paying for their education? Just get them in. Yeah. Well, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And also the other thing that you've just pointed out is that, you know, the survival of these departments that look after mothers and babies, it's intrinsic to our survival as a nation. Yeah. You know, this is so, so important. And not allowing, I mean, putting midwives under so much pressure where they can't even perform their training because they're being pulled towards in order to cover the chronic staff shortages is is horrific. So is it, so this is obviously a grim thing to talk about, but I think it's important in the context of this because people will be wondering this now. Why are so many babies dying? Is it because they are getting poor care when they are born and they've got a problem? Is it when they're actually going through labour? What are the actual physical causes of this? Mm. So again, it's it's a complex answer to mm. this. So one of the reasons is that, as we've mentioned, there's underfunding, understaffing, and people are being pushed to cover several different um, cases of labour at the same time, which they just can't cope with. Okay. But also the other thing that's going on here that isn't really being spoken about is a bit of a toxic culture that seems to be prevalent in some of these departments. And this is where whistleblowers, so people who wish to speak up mm. about things that they see are blamed, a little bit like we see with the mothers of these children who have died. So being who's blamed. responsible for that culture? Because I hate to say it, but I have had had experience, I don't want to go into too many specifics, but I have had experience of what I would argue is a bit of a cover-up culture mm. in the NHS. Mm. 
Mm. Is that it? So there is some of that which does go on. The, the problem is that there are endemic levels of bullying that are happening behind closed doors and no one is being held to account for this. So it's very, very difficult mm. for anyone to come along and to change that because people are potentially punished by raising some of these concerns. They're not allowed to speak up. They're not allowed to... To, to essentially insist on certain changes being made. And there are also really poor examples of some leadership as well, where, again, people aren't being held to account. And I'm, I'm glad 